All right. Hello, everybody. This is Miss Pi again. Um, I'm actually doing this recording at home instead of at work. So if you hear weird noises in the background, it's just my family trying to be quiet. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is, I'm going to be going over page 20, 24. I'm sorry. It is super late. I'm going over page 42, problems 10A. Problem 11, problem 14, 16, and 17 in this video. And then when we come to class on Monday, we will do um, s several problems on pages 43 and 44. So hopefully you brought your textbook with you. If you didn't, don't sweat it. Just write down, um, get a separate sheet of paper, write down the problems, and work your way through the problems with me, and then turn them in when you come to class on Monday. All right, so let's look at what our notes again. We, you've seen this before. You saw it in a video a long, long time ago. And so far, we've been focusing on the explicit formulas for geometric and, or excuse me, arithmetic and geometric sequences. Okay. Um, on Thursday of this week, we kind of got into a recursive formula with our finances. And then, um, just with those, it was just kind of crazy equations. Right now, I want to kind of take a step back and focus only on the arithmetic recursive formula and the geometric recursive formula, okay? And then how to convert from recursive to explicit, okay? Now, we all know so far, we all know that what a sub 1 is, and that's just your first term. And we know that the arithmetic sequence has a common difference and it doesn't matter whether you have the recursive formula or the explicit formula. You have to have your a sub 1 and your common difference. Okay, notice those are both there. And if you have one formula and you want to create the next, the other one, you just plug those terms wherever they need to go. Okay. Um, the biggest thing, make sure you remember what a sub 1 is and how to find it. And make sure you understand what d is and how to find it. Okay. And then the differences on the different types of formulas is with the recursive, you have the formula to find a sub n would be whatever your previous term is plus the common difference. With your explicit formula, you don't have a sub, you don't have to worry about your previous term anymore. You just have your first term, your common difference, and then n minus 1 in parentheses. And we've spent lots of time figuring out how to find this information and how to distribute and simplify your equation. So we're not going to spend any more time on that in this video. Okay, and then let's look at the geometric sequences. Again, you have your a sub 1s. You just need to know where to put them and your common ratios and your previous term here. Okay, with the explicit formulas, you don't have a previous term. With uh, recursive, you have to have a, um, excuse me, you have to have just the previous term before you can find the next one. All right, so let's look at some example problems. You have the geometric sequence 3, 6, 12, and 24, and all we need to do is write it, the formula recursively and explicitly. Well, before we do that, we need to figure out what our first term is. Our first term is 3, and we need to figure out what our common ratio is. I know it's a common ratio because they tell us it's a geometric sequence right here. So again, with the ratios, you take the second term divided by the first term. And in this case, we could do 6 divided by 3, or 12 divided by 6, or 24 divided by 12. Either way, we're going to get a 2 for our common ratio. So now to write it explicitly, let's do that first since we've had lots of experience with that. So it's a sub n equals the first term, which is 3, times the common ratio, which is 2, and then raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay, super easy, right? Now for the recursive formula, you have to say that n sub 1 equals 3. You have to give us the first term, okay? And then go ahead and give us the equation. So a sub n is equal to the previous term, a sub n minus 1 
times the common ratio, which is 2. All right, let's make sure we have everything covered. Uh, the first term times the common ratio. Got it. All righty. So that was just one example for a geometric. Let's look at an arithmetic sequence. So now we have an arithmetic sequence. In this case, our a sub 1 is 25, and we have to find the common difference, d. Okay, uh, 25 minus 22 is 3, So we're de but we're decreasing by 3, so that needs to be a negative 3. All right, so the explicit formula. A sub n equals um, my first term, which was 25, minus my common difference times n minus 1. All right? You should know how to simplify this. I will let you simplify it on your own. Um, to give yourself practice, um, once you simplify it, you should get the formula negative 3n plus 22. Okay, or you might have gotten positive 22 minus 3n. Either way, that's what you should get. Uh, so go ahead and distribute the three, combine like terms, and see if you got either of those equations. All right, the recursive formula. So again, we have to say what a sub 1 is. Okay, in this case it's 25, and then the rest of the equation would be a sub n equals the previous term, a sub n minus 1, and then minus the common difference of 3. Okay, pretty easy. Let's go back up, make sure we have it all set up. Okay, so usually it's a plus the common difference, but because we have a negative common difference, we're doing a minus 3. All right. Um, let's look at this one. We have, um, again, we're writing the recursive formula and the explicit formula, but this time they do not tell us whether it's a arithmetic or geometric sequence. So let's try it out. So just looking at these two numbers, I want to say, let's add 80 to it. Okay. So if we're adding 80, we would be we would have an arithmetic sequence. So let's check the second and the third term. If I add 80 again, I would get 480 plus 80 gives me 560. And you can see here that my third term is not 560. So guess what? It is not an arithmetic sequence. So because it's not arithmetic, let's go ahead and see if it's geometric. So 480 divided by 400. Let's see what that is. Okay. Um, you can do this a couple ways. You can just reduce your fraction or you can plug it into a calculator. And because we're in the video and thinking and talking and being recorded all at the same time is very disconcerting. So I'm just going to plug it into my calculator. I get 6 over 5. If I want to go ahead and convert that to a decimal, I can, and it's 1.2. So either way, 6 over 5 or 1.2. In this case, because it's not a repeating decimal, because it doesn't continue on forever, I will go ahead and let you convert it to a decimal. So this gives me the rate 1.2. Let's make sure that um, it is geometric and see if I get, if I take the next two terms, so 576 divided by 480, am I still going to get 1.2? Okay, let's check it out in the calculator. Whoops. Let's see, go. Okay, so 576 divided by 480, push, let's do control enter, and it gives me 1.2 again. So, it does give me 1.2. This is my common ratio, so we're all good here. Let me go ahead and erase this so I have more space. So now I know my um, first term is 400. My common ratio is 1.2. So for the explicit formula, I'm going to have a sub n equals 400 times my common ratio 1.2 raised to the n minus 1 power. 
Okay. Now for the recursive formula, let's write it over here. I'm going to say a sub 1 equals 400. Do not forget with the recursive formula, you have to include your term there, your a sub 1. Okay, so you have 400, and then so the regular equation would be a sub n equals my previous term, a sub n minus 1 times, I'm uh, trying to do a parenthesis there, there we go, times my common ratio of 1.2. Okay, so there's the two formulas, and let me see, do we have one more? Yes. All right. I guess we have two more. All right. So let's look at this scenario here. Uh, we have Katrina opens a savings account with $50 and deposits $20 each month. Her bank pays 3.06% compounded monthly. So this is very similar to the problem we had on Thursday with Maurice and going to college. Okay. Except his numbers were much bigger. All right, so with that formula, um, we had to take our initial balance, which in this case, she's opening the savings account with $50. So that's her A sub zero. Okay, this time it's not A sub one, this is A sub zero, your initial amount that you're depositing. And then we're multiplying by our... Um, actually, let me go ahead and get rid of the A sub 0, so I don't want to confuse you. So the $50, the initial amount, we're multiplying by 1 plus the 3.6%, okay? And this is, we are trying to figure out a formula to get, uh, write a recursive formula for A sub n. In this case, A sub n is your um, monthly balance. So we have 3.6 divided by 12. Do you guys remember why we divide by 12? It's because it's compounded monthly. So we're going to get a portion of the interest every month. And then we are, this time, instead of withdrawing money like Maurice, we are depositing $20. So in this case, we're just adding $20. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so... There we have the formula. Um, I do know we love to simplify the equations if we can. So in this case, this is going to be the equation for a sub n. And this is the initial, um, this is what we would do to find the first month's balance. Um, so to find a sub 1 and you know, I just put a sub n, and I want to put, to find a sub 1, this is the equation we would do, use, okay? Um, and then we can change that up the same way we changed our formula, our recursive formula in the calculator on Thursday. All right, so let's go ahead and do the math. Let's figure out what the interest rate would be. So we have 1 plus... 3.6 divided by 12. Let's plug that in and we get one. Oh my goodness, I forgot the percentage. All right, I need to get rid of that decimal. And this needs to be 0 0.036, okay, because that was a percentage. Okay, so now our interest rate is 1.003. So for our recursive formula, Okay, that's our a sub 1. For a recursive formula, our a sub n, okay, we're going to use our previous month's balance, so a sub n minus 1, and that's going to be multiplied by our rate, which was 1.003, yeah, 1.003, so times 1.003, and then we're just going to add the $20. Okay, so there we go. So now, um, 
And yes, we could calculate this all out and find a sub 1, which we probably should do. Let's go ahead and do that real quick because we should always know what our a sub 1 is. Um, so we have that interest rate 1.003 times it by our initial amount that we're depositing and then add $20 to it. Okay, so after for our first month, we have $70.15. Okay, and if... Let's see, that was $70.15, yeah. So if um, the this question here said find a sub 15 and then a sub 16, then we'd have to keep repeating this process over and over and over again to find these values. But we don't have to do that. They tell us that our a sub 15 is $358.68, and all we have to do is find a sub 16. So really, the this $70.15, that's good to know, but we can just kind of ignore that this time because they give us our previous term right here. So now, if we are looking for a sub 16, then we need to take our previous term, which is the 358.68. Okay. We're going to multiply that by 1.003. And yes, I am going to use my calculator. And then I'm going to add $20 to it. Okay. So when we do that, let's go ahead and find our total. Uh, three fifty eight point six eight times one point zero zero three, and then plus twenty dollars. All right. So my answer, my calculator tells me that the answer is three hundred seventy nine dollars. Sorry, that is a seven. That doesn't look like a seven. Sorry. $379.76. I know that banks will always round down, but we're going to go ahead and be nice and round up. So that's how much is in her savings account. And if we wanted to, we could then use this amount to calculate A sub 617 or A sub 18 or whatever. All right. So I hope you got some good notes. I hope you paid attention. I hope you paused when you needed to pause. And please, please, please rewind this and watch it again if you need to. All right. On Monday, we will do some practice problems. If you don't have this, these notes filled out, then you are going to watch the video and fill out the notes while the rest of us work on some of our problems. All right. See you Monday.